and allergy season. So is there a way to tell the difference between them? Joining us now is Dr. David Goldberg. He's a noted infectious disease and internal medicine specialist and assistant professor of medicine at Columbia College of Physicians and Surgeons. Thanks so much for being with us today, doctor. Before we talk about that, I just have to ask you, what is your opinion of the way that New York State and New York City is handling the coronavirus right now, the response? I think they're doing the best they could do in an extremely difficult, totally unprecedented situation. Mm -hmm. We talk about planning, but I'm not sure how you can plan for something like right, this. It really seems now it's just about mobilizing, doing the things we need to do, which changes by the day. Yes. Yeah. yes. Is there anything more you feel should be done right now? Right now, no, but the question is, what do we do next? If it continues to get worse, the next step would be a lockdown, the mm -hmm. way we've seen in Wuhan City in China, right. in South Korea, Italy, and also in right. Italy, first yeah. northern Italy, then the entire country. Mm -hmm. We may be coming to that situation. I'm not qualified to say sure. if we've reached that point yet, but we may be getting to that point fairly soon. Well, since you're so esteemed, we appreciate you weighing in on that. Okay, so now back to our other subject. How can you tell the difference between the coronavirus, allergies, the flu. You really can't, and that's the problem. You can't unless you do a test, and we don't have enough tests at this time. So what, I'll tell you what we're doing in our office, and I think many o other offices are doing the same. Uh, in the past, as long as I've practiced medicine, if someone called with a call for runny nose and wanted to come in, we simply offered them an appointment. Sure. We don't do that at this point because right. we're concerned they might have coronavirus. We don't want them to spread it to the other patients or to our staff. So instead, what we say is the doctor will call you back and we interview them on the phone and try to First, we want to make sure they don't have coronavirus. If we think they do, we'll notify the health department. And even if they don't, if it sounds like allergies, it's not worth taking a chance bringing them into the office. Mm -hmm. sure. And we'll try to take care of them by phone. And in many cases, you really can. Right. right. Telemed is on the rise. Yeah. Sure. And telemed. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did mention too devices. Obviously, we all carry our cell phones with us everywhere we go. Yes. And we've heard conflicting information about how long it can last in the, on our service. natural environment yeah. on the phone, etc. What's your opinion of that? We don't really know. Mm -hmm. yet that other coronaviruses can last up to eight days on surfaces or other inanimate objects. We have to assume that the novel coronavirus, COVID, can do the same. I don't think we have to go crazy sterilizing our phones every day. Mm -hmm. What I would recommend is people shouldn't share phones. We all know we're in social yeah. situations. We're on the phone with someone, then we hand the phone to someone oh, look else. look at this, yeah. Yeah, don't look at this on the phone. <laughs> right. Hi, or take a picture for <laughs> me. Oh, happens true, all the yeah. time. Yeah. Don't share your phone. That's, that's a great, what I there you go. That's a good, reasonable piece of information. Yeah, that <sighs> I think is valuable. Dr. Goldberg, thanks so much thank for coming so in. Much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Well, the cruise industry obviously already hit hard.